Hello and welcome to this video on types in the Hindley Milner type system. We're going to break down the types into their different parts, um, into the basically building blocks of what makes up a type in the Hindley Milner type system. So in the last video we briefly looked at what is type inference, we also found out what the Hindley Milner type system was, and we said it was a type system for the lambda calculus with let statements, that's the lambda calculus we've been looking at. And actually this type system will allow us to perform type inference uh, through kind of mathematical rules. So what are those building blocks in the Hindley Miller type system? So first there's type variables. These are in a similar way to uh, expression variables. They're basically a placeholder for something else. So we might have alpha or beta, and these could be anything. These could perhaps actually under the hood be equal to, you know, int, or it could be a, a function from integer to bool. It could be all kinds of different things, but it's basically a symbol that represents this is a type um, under the hood. We've also got type function applications. So for example, we might have a list of booleans. In other languages, it might be written like this, where we have booleans and some square brackets after it in TypeScript, or a list of bools in Python. We might have a function from integer to bool. Um, this is something that you know looks quite similar to um, our odd function from earlier. And again, in TypeScript and Python, it might look something like this. We might use a slightly different syntax, uh, just so it's easier to read, where we use an arrow in between them, uh, and that means the same thing. And actually, bool and int and all those other things are actually type function applications themselves. Um, so in this case, it's a type function which doesn't take any arguments. So for example, list took one argument. It was just the, the thing that is in the list. The function type function takes two arguments. So for example, it took uh, int and bool before. But bool is effectively a type function. You can imagine it as taking zero arguments. So it's just kind of on its own. We also have this, so this is another type function application. So the alphas represent our type function variables, but we've applied a type function on top of them. So we applied the function type function uh, on top of them. I know that's, that's weird to think about, um, but effectively it's a function that takes them. Maybe an easier example is a list of alphas, where again, you know, our list is our type function, which takes one type argument, and that type argument is our type variable alpha. So those are the two kind of main types in Hindley Milner that we're going to start looking at. Um, we're going to call these monotypes. So this is our type function variables. So this is our type variables and our type function applications. If you want to pause now and see if you can write out the grammar in a similar way as we wrote out the grammar for lambda functions, because again, it's just these are the building blocks that we can build up. Um, so the grammar is something like this. Where we're going to say tau, which is our, our monotype, so it's kind of like a T for type, is either, uh, so it's equal to either an alpha, which is our type variable, or, that's the pipe, our type function application, um, so that's our capital C is going to be our type function, and then our little taus are the arguments that we're passing to that function. So C can be all kinds of different type functions to work for Hindley Milner, it has to at least have functions. But you know, frequently we're going to put in functions, we're going to put in integers, booleans, lists, maps, two tuples and three tuples, four tuples, five tuples, all the way up. And so by a tuple, I mean, say, a pair of elements for a two tuple or a triplet of elements for a three tuple, something like that. And you might want to think, OK, for each of these functions here, how many type arguments are they taking? So our function took two arguments, right? The type it's going from and to int and bool take zero for type arguments. List takes one type argument because you just take a list of some type. Map takes two type arguments because you're going from one to the other and so on. So you can have a go thinking about different type functions. So these are the monotypes in Hilly Milner. There's also one more construct that we're going to add, which are polytypes. Um, and these are formed with for all quantifiers. And it looks something like this, where we're going to say for all alpha dot alpha to alpha. And this function means basically for any type, it's an identity function from that type back to the same type. And it will look quite familiar if you've done a lot of OCaml or Haskell. If you haven't, then in TypeScript or Python, it might look something like this, where you're using generics, effectively an identity function with generics. So you might think, well, OK, this looks, uh, looks interesting. Well, what's the point of the for all quantifier? You know, surely beta to beta is basically the same thing as this, this top line, uh, right? And that's where actually it's different. So alpha in the top line is effectively bound by that for all quantifier and can take any value. And that type is actually, you know, from anything to anything. 
The bottom one, beta to beta, means that beta actually has a specific value, which may not be compatible in different places. So for example, in this expression, if id had the type for all alpha, alpha to alpha, then it would work because, you know, again, this is a similar expression we saw when we were looking at lead expressions. id is taking a number and keeping it the same as the identity function. Odd is then converting that number into a Boolean because it's telling us whether it's odd or even. And then id is then the identity function again on top of that and is taking it from Boolean to Boolean. So this would work if it was for all alpha, alpha to alpha. If it was beta to beta, well, we'd say, okay, let's look at the netmost nested one. That's id3. Oh, and therefore this must be int to int. And then we zoom out a bit and we get to odd. Okay, that's fine. And we get to the other id. Well, then we said, well, it's beta to beta. And we determined beta was int. And so this isn't going to work because we're trying to apply a Boolean and we're going to throw a type error. Hopefully that distinction helps. If you're still a bit confused, don't worry. We're going to go through some examples. You'll also kind of get the hang of it, I think, as you go along. But this is something that you kind of have to wrap your head around the difference between these two. So if we look at the full grammar, we see something like this. This assumes we're going to put all our quantifiers on the outside, but that's fine. It's basically equivalent. So we have our monotypes, that's tau at the top, can be either a variable alpha or it can be a type function application, which is, you know, our capital C is our type function and then all these other taus um, out there. And there may no, be no uh, actual arguments, none of these taus. For example, it could be a bool or an int, which are type functions that take zero arguments. Or there could be many of these. So for example, if it was a three tuple or a triplet, basically, there might be three different types there. So it could be a three tuple of bool, bool, int, which means you have to have basically you know, true, true, three or true, true, one, something like that. Those would fit that type. And then building on top of monotypes, we have polytypes. That's our sigma there at the bottom. So that can either be sigma equals tau, a monotype. So basically all monotypes are polytypes just because it's kind of a, a bigger set. Or it can be a polytype with a quantifier. So that's our for all alpha and then sigma. So maybe this helps, maybe this is uh, confusing. I think let's go into some practical examples and we'll understand a bit more how this breaks down our types. So let's have a look at this type, which is for all alpha, it's a list of alpha to alpha. So let's break this down. Well, again, we're gonna do a similar thing to what we did in the Lambda calculus exercises. We're gonna go bottom up. We're gonna look at, hey, these are the variables at the kind of lowest level. Uh, well, then what's the next thing up? Well, it's that type function application there, the arrow, so that's our type function application. And then we've got another type function application with our list. This is itself a monotype, as is everything else underneath this. And then outside all of this, we've wrapped it in a for all alpha quantifier, and this itself is now a polytype. So that was a brief introduction into the building blocks of types in Healy Milner. I know we went through it quite quickly, and it can take some time to wrap your head around. Try maybe coming up with your own exercises or having a look at different types in languages like Haskell and OCaml if you're still confused. But also as we go through, I think it will become more and more obvious how these types are building up and we'll go through some other examples later.